Science and medicine seem to present opposite viewpoints on so many things. So, yeah, how is it determined what fact and wisdom to uh, employ, like in, in the hospitals and energy generation and, and transportation? Um, I realize that today with the monetary system and competition and all the corporations having to set themselves apart, that gets really convoluted. And what we're talking about is a society in which things make a lot more sense and they're done for completely different reasons. But... Um, is this just a matter of consensus and, and, and decision by committee? Or, you know, again, how, how no. is it determined what fact and wisdom is the one that we're, we're going to choose? And it's really pursue? the same thing. The, the things are put to test. Yeah. They're not based on somebody because they're in a position. You have to back up where, that, where those decisions come from. And um, as I mentioned, statistical data and, and verification and other people being able to run the same processes that that person came did to come up with the same oh, results further verification yeah like it's put to the test it's, right it's vetted out that's true uh -huh. yep so there's really no problem with that in in this type of society because um you know it, it as i said it's not based on opinions so how about as far as... Oh, I, I yep. just want to mention, I was going to go with that, but, but you had already said it earlier. Today, there is a problem because whatever information comes out, it's usually used for somebody's benefit or an ad advantage or economic advantage, primarily. Um, so you, you don't know wh where to go with these things. It's very hard to even... Even science has been corrupted in the monetary system. So... In, I don't even think in a lot of ways we would know many things until after that completely gets out of the system. Then there'd be a lot of research done to verify certain things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We, won't, we don't even need to get too deeply into about how people from corporate world are involved in government world and uh, the, the nepotism and the science that's paid for and who's the one yeah. footing the bill, therefore which way are things swayed in the scientific result. Once we eliminate that, now we've got true science. We've got actual um, best practices to determine things. Right, yeah. and even in the universities, it's backed up by certain corporations and certain money. Oh. So, you know, you don't want to go against the people who are giving you that money. Yeah. It's a trap. We're it is. such a trap. And that's where, that's what I love about the Venus Project. It liberates us from that, that exact trap right there. Who are we serving? That's the bottom right, line. That's Who it. are we serving? Yeah, for whose benefit? Yeah, and in the Venus that's Project, right. we're serving ourselves, our human family, our human race, our precious planet. That's a big, different, uh, vastly different modus operandi when that's what your value system is at the core. And it comes down to when all the Earth's resources become the common heritage of all the Earth's people, then all those, all that corruption becomes... It, it, it's gone. It's obsolete. Really. Let's yeah. render corrupt. Let's render corruption obsolete. There's, there's <laughs> the bottom. There, for it. Yeah, the Venus Project, rendering corruption obsolete. Perfect. Let's do that. Um, here's a good. This is a personal one for me, really. Many people feel that violent imagery in movies and video games, etc., incites violence by normalizing it. How would that be handled in the Venus Project? Would those be allowed, or are you really condoning censorship? Um, I always like the statement that said, in the future, the horror movies would be movies of today. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But people feel they get off on that. They, they're not, they don't enjoy a movie unless they ah, kill them. Is well, that, do we want that to be part of our, our world in the no. future? And how, how do we evolve no. forward from that when we people don't, are so attached to it? People are manipulated to that viewpoint. Yeah. And they even have... Um, you know, processes when you're making a movie and so much trauma here. That's a, it's a whole formula that they've come up with that they keep mm. pushing and pushing. To and make people, money off that movie. Yeah, and, and people are, are conditioned to seeing that too. Um, so, <laughs> you know, what people experience and what, in, 
in the past, or even now, you, you see kids that are going to the movies and eating popcorn and getting very excited with, with some monster taking their claws and, and ripping out the intestines or whatever the horrifying right. thing is, but they don't let people in a movie watch a, somebody making love to another person or the breast showing or somebody mm -hmm. touching a breast, you know, but they let kids go and see these kind of movies. And um, what, what do you want with mm -hmm. kids? Because everything, you're always being conditioned, whatever your experience, that, that formulates how a person thinks or a child thinks or, or the things that they want to see. And besides, these things condition people to go to war. When you have competitive sports and football, when they're ramming their head against another person's head, and they become mentally damaged, mm -hmm. and they just use them, um, they don't really care for them when they let that happen. Mm -hmm. You watch people make money off of somebody punching somebody in the head and damaging their head, and they get excited about that. You know, um, how do it's we just evolve what people forward? But people love that, though. My dad watches professional football all day on Sunday. Are we going to take that away from him? Well, it primes, uh, no. that primes people for war, yeah. you know, us against them. You keep people working five days a week, and then Saturday, Saturday they have to do all their chores, um, go food shopping, clean the house. Sunday, you keep them dulled down in front of a, a football game that gets them excited about violence, mm -hmm. and that's that's all very useful. Yeah, it's bread and circus. Keep them distracted yeah. and give them just enough to eat, and then they won't rebel and, and, and uh, revolt. But but again, like, did people they they if, if I told my dad you're not going to get to watch football anymore, we're not doing it anymore, you'd be taking away his best friend, his comfort. I mean, how, how do we do that? And there's a lot of education with that too. You know, even in you use everything for education. You under you can teach them what they're really being exposed to and how they're being manipulated, and um, and, and you really have to give them other things to replace that. Yeah, of course. But you, I think I think what you're saying in a way is speak to their compassion. Like, Dad, do you know how the, these people who play this game that you get so much pleasure out of watching do you know that they're all crippled by the time they're 60 years old they're crippled they're gonna experience do you want them and to experience pain for their whole life they were like making a sacrifice for you to get a thrill watching that yeah. is that what you want for your human family to me that's it when we speak to people's sensitivities and their compassion is when we can help them evolve their consciousness to something that's more compassionate in action and where the money goes yeah. and how much money football players get and teachers don't get and yeah. scientists don't get yeah. and what kind of world do we want yeah. you know ultimately which kind of world do you want to support moving yeah. forward yeah is that thrill worth it for your Sundays and can we find anything else to do on a Sunday that would feel more productive more constructive more compassionate and that's helping us move forward do you it, want to keep us stuck or do you want to help us move forward I think that's yeah, kind of bottom right line. right and I think it uh, um, which keeps people stuck is they don't have options. Yeah. You know, yeah. they really are not given that many options. You don't, you can't go up to many people and say, where are you going next year on your world cruise? And you know why they open their checkbook and they just close it again. Going so, nowhere. Yeah, <laughs> and fast. I can afford to go uh, around the corner. <laughs> so uh, in, a, in a culture where they have many more options, I, I don't think they would do that as much and especially as they learn from a young age so many other things that are more exciting and opened up to travel learning things sharing things with people making things um, yeah so I'm glancing at my next question I'm thinking boy I can already hear the answer because the, the answer to a lot of these is really the same re-education yes. re-education re-education reconditioning helping people discover their own value system and that it doesn't align with the way we're living and so there's so much polarization between people in the united states and in the world really especially between nationalities and religions 
they're afraid they'll lose what they hold dear and, and what they consider their identity to be. So how, how are they accommodated? How are we accommodated in the Venus Project? You know, is there every type of, type of church that there is um, or no churches at all? How about, you know, the people who wear religious clothing or pray five times a day? Um, do they give up what they hold dear? Is this, uh, are we going to be able to re-educate them that, that you were given a mindset that didn't serve you? And how do people hold that they think it's their, they think it's them. They think they owe their life to Jesus Christ. And if they did anything against that, they're not going to heaven. Yeah. How do you overcome that? <laughs> well, first of all, um, you don't come in and overcome it. You have to have people who are exposed to that, that understand that, have learned something else, and they can best approach those people, mm -hmm. too. Um, but so it's like the recovered alcoholic yeah. teaching the alcoholics how to get through yeah, it. it yeah. works much better that way. Yeah. But um, you can't strip people of that, right. or you can't, you can't forcefully say you can't do that. It yeah. goes underground. You have to so give them give a them reason every church, to... Then? Well, you might give them a building and people can use it as a church. You can divide it up, but it's used for something else during the week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know okay. what I mean? So, um, and you introduce into the sermons different ways of thinking about things because yeah. they listen to that sometimes if it's, if it's interesting at all to them. Or if it's delivered in a way that they're accustomed to hearing yeah. that they'll buy into. You open up more so what the sermons are saying. But it's just like you, when you, when, if, if that's where people are at, where they watch soap operas, then you put educational things into, into soap, soap operas. Opera. So it, it sounds like it's really a transition. It's a tra it's like yeah. you say, so you develop, the, the, you deliberately evolve, but that evolves. It doesn't happen overnight. Um, and that's how kids or people in sociology or behaviorism are um, not graded, but, you know, learn certain things when they can change people's behaviors and values. That's a test. And that's the job, really, that has to be worked on in the future. But not my values or somebody else's particular values, but how we relate to the world and one another and how we can bring everyone up so you don't have war, you don't have poverty, you don't have differences in different religions and controversies, you know, mine's better, you're not going to heaven unless you have mine. Um, they, they create a lot of problems. And as long as, you know, it's, it, it's like during the Great Depression, it was, a, it was a very scary time for people who were in positions of differential advantage or had a lot of money or power because they would keep people separated deliberately, but they had something called the Wobblies where things got so bad that all the labor unions joined together. The blacks, the Chinese, the whites, the white collar, the blue collar, the women, and, and they all joined together as a force. And keeping them separate is an advantage for those who are running the factories. Divide and conquer. That's right. Simple as that. So, and it's still going on. So, um, you know, we blame the immigrants who were coming in, the, the aliens, mm -hmm. I mean, it was like they came in from outer space or something. Um, so this is used throughout the whole culture, and if people understand those things and what they're used for, they and broaden it more towards the brotherhood of, or the sisterhood or the humanity of all humanity, <laughs> you know, that we all need the same things. Yeah. We all need clean water, clean air, relevant education, suitable housing, medical care from birth to death. We need to be able to have a, a relevant um, an education so we can meet, we can achieve our highest potentials. So we all need the same things. Let's do that. Let's provide. So, good. Some people believe that a healthy lifestyle is fruits and vegetables. Other people believes that, believe that humans need meat. We've always hunted. Um, who gets to believe they're getting the healthy food they need? Who decides what food is available? Um, same thing yeah. in terms of being able to put, put things to test. How people react, how diseases, you know, if they eat certain foods, if they want to, okay but can we study you? Yeah. But, and you can make foods taste like other foods too if people still need that. Mm -hmm. Or if they're exposed to better foods, I think they would have a taste for different foods if they knew the consequences of, 
of what a unhealthy lifestyle would give them. I mean, I, my one, and I, I feel like, okay, well, we can be weaned off of anything and our, our palate adjusted. And on the other hand, a lot of people think that that's manipulation. You're manipulating me. And it, it, we're, yeah, we're manipulating you to pursue your own health and well being. We're manipulating you right. into a value system that would actually serve you. You've been manipulated into a value, into exactly. a, a practice in, in, in life that doesn't serve you, that isn't healthy or sustainable. And when you look around, people are sick they're taking pills, they're going to doctor appointments and they're not well and they're dying prematurely before they have to and their quality of life is suffering because they're sick. And somebody's making a lot of money off and that. But we of are money. always controlled, yeah, like you say, yeah. and people don't know that. Yeah. Their set and their values and their likes and their dislikes have been given to them for whose who's benefit. Yeah, they're sub been sold a bill of goods yeah. literally and figuratively. And, it's it's really true that, that the two underlying things of getting off of money and not having that as the incentive, so everything's nefarious and manipulated for someone's gain, and then that we're re-educating and reconditioning into a new environment that will shape new types of behavior. Not rah, rah, rah at the football, but hey, let's go build this thing. Hey, let's make this better food. Let's, let's get people healthier. Let's get enthusiastic about getting healthier and having compassion to help each other get healthier. Why on earth wouldn't we do that? Seriously, it, what are it, we doing? It doesn't make money We're today. We're just pawns. <laughs> We're so fooled. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's sad, but I I think there's hope, and and the Venus Project is what gives me hope, because it's so sad, and it, I don't see it changing, at all in any other way. We hear that from a lot of people that yeah. it gives hope. Yeah. Yeah. Some. Um, okay. So animals as well people feel that animals have rights and should never be exploited for our purposes uh, you know does that mean do we eliminate leather in the venus project how about animal experiments you know if it helps us advance our science by testing on the animals rather than humans do we do that or is that an ethical dilemma i i think we have to kind of learn um where our attitudes come from where our desires come from <clears throat> and um how we can put science towards making other things to substitute those things mm -hmm. if they hurt people, if they hurt animals, if they hurt the environment. But they're doing some wonderful things with testing with, um, with human tissues and cells and replicating different organs in our body and running tests that way. Mm -hmm. And also through computer, huge data Hmm. based computers yeah, and models yes yeah. it was the word I was thinking of yeah so we sort of move beyond that need yeah. to test on the animals and, and we can make mushroom leather now and all kinds of vegan products as they call them in many cases and, and why do we even want leather we, we want a something that will cover us and keep right. us warm right well we want a strong material like to hold our pants up or to keep our yeah. shoes our, our, our feet protected from the environment something sturdy yeah. But yeah, it doesn't that have can to be come duplicated. From animal, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, here's one. I mean, again, the, I, every question I have goes to like the same it's kind of similar. thing. But many people in the United States feel very strongly that they deserve their right to bear arms. How is the subject of guns handled in the Venus Project, and what happens to the hundreds of millions of guns that are already here? Well, there's a reason why people want guns. Mm -hmm. In this culture, I can understand that, but if you're if you're within a culture where, say, um, people have access to goods, if you can get something, the other person can go into the access center and and get that same product or have the same service. Mm -hmm. So you don't have somebody doesn't have to come into your house and steal it. And you don't have anything to protect, therefore, because they can get theirs. That's right. Yeah. So you, we look for the conditions in the culture and surpass those. So we look at the sources of the problems and try and design a culture that designs those problems mm -hmm. out of the system. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't do it by laws. Uh, laws just show that you have an inadequate culture, that you have to put laws and regulations. When they make laws don't steal, who makes those laws? Those people who have something to steal. So, so what problem were you solving by having that gun and then solve that problem so you'd make the gun obsolete? 
Right. What do we literally, like, physically do with all the guns? That's a lot of guns. There's a lot of steel that's gone into You weaponry. reprocess that, and you use the steel, yeah. and you, you know, those are valuable materials. Yeah. So. I saw a great story once about a guy, I think Mexico or some Central American country, where he was melting down guns and making shovels. Uh, what was that? That's great. Um, swords to plowshares, yeah. plow plowshares, right? That kind of thing, yeah. Yeah. We can do better, right? We can do better. Um, how about the really controversial stuff, right? Um, abortion, boy, that's a hot topic. Drugs, euthanasia, assisted suicide. I don't know if there's any real controversial or hot topics when, when you put things to test and you, you show people under dis different circumstances what happens if this happens, what happens if that happens, what happens when you have an overpopulation, it, it turns into territorial disputes, wars, scarcity, you know, if you have scarcity. Um, so people have to understand those things. And, you know, in educated countries, they automatically have less children. In, in the old days, they needed children to run the farm. So many people would die, had to take care of the elderly. We don't have to do that in a culture that where people are taken care of. So you know you'll be taken care of too when you get older, as Jacques mentioned in that in the video. Well, we, we, I mean, there's a fundamental debate. At what stage is an embryo or a fetus a life? You know, I mean, where does that go? It comes from religion. Yeah. Um, and eventually religion has to be surpassed because you, those, those problems will continue. Um, yeah. Those stories are holding us back from real compassion, real value systems. Yeah, we're, it's kind of like we're, we're living our great, 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 great grandparents' values over and over yeah. again because the value system hasn't changed. The yeah. technology is getting much better and we can serve people with it if, if we set up an environment that does that. It's abusing people today, but um, our values aren't changing. Is there a little bit of a conflict there, though, with our biology? Like, every animal on Earth is programmed in their DNA to reproduce, to propagate their species and carry it on. That's part of the, the meaning of life is to keep that life going, not end, let it end. So people have that, bi they feel that biological imperative. We even say, oh, the biological clock is ticking. It's time to have babies or you're not going to be able to. And obviously, if everyone on Earth keeps having babies and we keep getting healthier and able to sustain life longer, our population is going to, I mean, we think it's exploded now. It's going to really explode. So is, is this just a matter of education of I know you feel you want to have babies, but not everyone's going to be able to. And we just have well, to take responsibility for not making so many babies? Yes, yeah, so we're going to have to have some kind of um, population control. Yeah, curb. If, yeah. Unless, you know, the consequences are pretty dire yeah. if we don't. And we see them. Yeah, and, and, you know, if people don't necessarily have sex to have babies, <laughs> you can still have sex. It's not uh, the control. purpose. Yeah, yeah and, and they really do hit up on, on women you know, when when they're young, they get dolls to take care of children, and um, it it's it's programmed from the beginning. So the it's, white wedding too. Every girl dreams of her white wedding. And in, in it's the put gold in there. ring. It's and, not hers. Yeah, there. and how long do weddings? The marriages usually last. <laughs> yeah. And the diamond, put the rock on her finger. Yeah. If you don't do that, if the rock wasn't nice enough, eh, you're not the guy. And would yeah, that be the woman that you want with yeah. those values? Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Does she want me just for the rock, or does she really love me? You know, is she going to care about me or yell at me for what I'm doing or not doing? Yeah. yeah and under, uh, unfortunately, a lot of times women are just ornaments on men's arms too, yeah. because that's what they push on television. Let's push something else on the television, <laughs> the internet, or wherever we get our information. So, some oh, I just want to mention please. something else with, with the children. And a lot of times people, to show that it is pushed, you know, the family have your kid. Um, if people really cared about having kids or kids in general, they would be working with kids before they were having kids. But they just want their own kid to go down into history. Who, like Jackie used to say, who's going to water your grave after 200 years? They don't. 
to it's e is serving the ego yeah that's one valuable thing to learn is yeah. when we're serving our ego and when we're actually serving a value system because they're often at odds and all kids are lovable yeah yeah and when you have community you can love all the kids in the community yeah you know you don't need to have your own pet when everyone's got a pet you can you know pet the neighborhood's dogs you still get the interact the interface and I think again there'll be so many more options in the future that I, I don't think that people will want that as much yeah give alternatives yeah alternatives to watching the football alternative to having the kids alternative to eating the bacon yeah and the ice cream and the, the stuff that gosh we know we live in a world where if you try to be healthy you're a nut you're a health nut we know how often do we say I know I shouldn't be eating this I know I shouldn't have another well it triggers dopamine in the brain and that's a powerful yeah. force compelling us to do something it controls you yeah. Yeah. well some people Ray Kurzweil being one of the most vociferous and loud loudest ones believe we are inevitably heading for the singularity we're gonna merge with the machine some people feel it's a very dangerous way to go and perhaps starting with a chip embedded in our skin or right in with the brain someone to literally upload their consciousness to the computer how does this this AI and this type of merge between biology and technology fit in with the Venus project well it's really kind of arrogant and unrealistic to think that that people are the the end product of evolution yeah and we are merging either inside or outside with machines all the time you know we have pacemakers we have artificial limbs we have artificial kidneys hearts mm -hmm. um, and that enhances our lives mm -hmm. um, but it, it today <laughs> in the free enterprise system that notion scares me a lot because um, because the technology today is used for surveillance, it's used for destruction, it's, it's used when people lose their jobs, they lose their homes, there's no provisions, they lose their homes, they can lose their wives, their husbands, they can lose the kids' ability to go to school, um, they can lose their identity, because that's their identity, their job, not what they're learning, what they know, how they relate to other people. So. It, in today's society, I would be very afraid of it because it means surveillance and it's used against you, mm -hmm. not to help and you. Track you, yeah, surveillance. Yeah, so, and manipulate you and use you. Yeah. So. But so the point is, is that to the extent that technology serves to enhance our lives and serve us and and improve the quality of our life or the quantity of our life or our health, that. Um, that that's a good thing we should take advantage we should get the chip in the head if that enhances our intelligence and enables us to to function better we're going to be surpassed there has to be some kind of interface so we can keep up with what's going on in the yeah. world but yeah. uh today it's um i would be afraid of it yeah but we yeah so we need to be very careful in this culture and environment and economic environment the um, cultural environment uh, to be very the political environment, especially the religious environment, to yeah. be very careful about how we how much we let the machine in. But if we're in, if we've evolved into the Venus Project, the resource-based economy, the new culture, then it, those things can really serve. You us. don't have to be afraid of yeah, technology at that yeah. point. And when technology comes along and does something better, faster, more efficiently than you, <laughs> and Bring you lose your job, yes, you're happy because that means your standard of living of living is higher because anything that's produced goes right back into society for everyone's use without a price tag or without money so right you're happy to see the machines then you can do other things that you're interested in this is great because I, I really felt like there's no going back we have that no, device in our hand it just need it to be a lot easier when they, the the glasses thing came out that that seemed easier you don't have to hold it and it shows you the map and where you're headed right in front of your eyes but again it feels so icky and nefarious and big brother slipping in yeah. because it kind of is right now it's surveillance it's government it's corporate they're they want to market to us they want to find out our buying habits and what we like yes. and so that they can just market to us more and sell us yes. more stuff if you get all of that 
out of society, mm -hmm. and then you have a different kind of surveillance. Mm -hmm. If you go out in a boat, you're surveilled. Mm. They're looking so if out anything for you. Happens, yeah. They know where to find yeah. you. Yes. They're not looking out. They're not you know, using you, they're or abusing you. you. Yeah. There's no need for that. Yeah. No, that. There's nothing to be gained by abusing somebody else. But if you help them raise up and become more educated, then they contribute to your standard of living. It's kind of like functional selfishness. Yeah, and we all you know? gain. That's we right. All benefit. If you set up the circumstances to make that happen. Oh, it's why this fundamental shift is so important, Roxanne, because we're heading for it anyway. And it's like, which are we going to do? Is it going to be Big Brother or is it going to be all of us human family? I think the hard part about it is that people aren't aware of the alternative or yeah. that there is an alternative so they want to go back to nature or they want to go back to religion or you know make a little commune that takes care of them and the hell with everybody else which in this society makes you want to do that yes yes yeah but let's create a society where oh we don't want to leave leave it why would we do that this is great yes everyone cares and everyone gets everything they need yeah. yeah, and that would just be, ge be beginning of the civilized world, yeah. as Jacques used to say. Let's, which see is what, a, let's see what civilized would look like. Yes. Let's give it a try. I mean, <laughs> it can't be any worse. <laughs> it can't be any worse.